folks, welcome back to the channel, Farmer Evil Extreme here. Here we are on the 15th of August 2024, and we're going to be looking at all the new mods that's dropped today, including some updates. As always, time will be, will be down below for every mod you want to look at today. But without further ado, let's get cracking on with some updates. So for our map updates, there is five of them, starting off with the Cal Farm by ABT Frankie Y, Chainshock 1.0.0.7, Remove bushes in the extreme version which are going through the fields, oh, that sounds a bit weird. Other small improvements have been made and a new PDA and map overview image has been done. For this to be implemented into your game saving act, a new game save is required. There is a huge update to Erdenberg, changelog 1.1, it now is 291.61 megabytes in Spy West modding. And yep, yeah, huge changes, so it doesn't say whether or not it needs a new game save. Maybe on safe hand side, have a new game save, but at the end of the day, I, I don't know for sure. Nat, actually, no, it does say new game save is required. I missed that bit, but yeah, we'll get to that bit in a sec. But yeah, what's well, been updated? So, the horse table has been revised along with the rut crusher and updates the sugar factory unloading points being revised. It has fixed the pallet spawning at the bakery, fixed decorations at the farm can be sold, along with cotton and sugar cane can now be sold. So that's good to see. The wooden bucket has been removed. On to some changes in that. So it's changed the terrain at the BG adjusted. A new game save has or new game save is required for that at least. Along with that, the recipe at the Rock Crusher has been changed, the deer area has been enlarged, a jetty has been added at the harbour, the tunnel at the sawmill has been also changed, along with street sign textures and that. Along with this, there has been some new additions. One of them does require a new game save, and that is the additional of grass on field island of field 10. Apart from that, nothing else says it needs a new game save. But along with that, a horse table can be bought. Seven new collectibles has been added. French translations has been added. In trigger mark has been added. Vegetable patch pad maker has been added. Water treatment plan has been added. Dirty water has been added as a field type, so I actually may want to do, look into this map a bit more. That about to be a future video now. Changes in advertising at the bus stops: sugar beets, potatoes, carrots, beet, beetroots, and parsnip to the vegetable beds. The premium expansion is not required for the parsnip, so that is a good thing to see. Additionally, as has been added, is the walking animation to the bucket. The bucket color section has been added. And lastly, the hay storage to the farm barn has been added. Now for El Villarejo, Villarejo, I'm not sure I pronounced, I do apologise. This is by Urshaba. Huge update, I think. Uh, change log 1.0.1, I'll say why in a sec. But yeah, anyways, change log for this update is as following. The manure purchase point has been added to the bee farm. Improvements in the decorations, Nike sell the packaged chickpeas and lentils to the pizzeria and supermarket. Fix the display bug at the pellet factory. Decorations that appeared inside the slice bunker in the biogas store has been or was re relocated. Other minor changes or other minor bugs were fixed. Add the ability to purchase the map perimeters that I love to see on maps. All maps should have that at least, but anyways. Now in the standard Sandarin mode, the four farms are configured. Map boundary collision in Phil 6 has been corrected. Added a wide variety of collectibles. Several collisions were added at different points on the map and correct, corrected the pistachio tree, flower textures and that. And I'm guessing all of this below is just, yeah, the map contents and that. So I'm pretty sure, yeah, that, that is all standard. So forget about all that below but yeah so a decent update with this map and that and why not you need a new game save again it does not say so in theory it should be fine that I don't see any of this requiring a new game save at least but anyways have a look at your own risk update to the map Oshishkus not Oshishku I'm not sure how to pronounce it 22 final do apologize on pronunciations of some of these maps today it's absolutely all atrocious and that but the final version of this map it says change log 1.2.0.4 a new game save is not required thankfully some clarification here and yeah the final changes that's been made is as following 
Collisions at the Holly Homes has been removed. Maestral has been fixed. The Tritical Stubble Destruction has been fixed. Crone Emson has been fixed. The rear lights. The Valstrad Rapid 400S has been added. And there's some info with this as well. Is when the standard AI helper is used in the road traffic, the traffic should be turned off. In multiplayer, farm decorations, fences, and hedges can be sold via the Christ Osho Holstein farm. Have fun at Oshi Kutz and successful harvest. So, yeah, final updates to this map by Take Your LS. And for our final mod, glad to see it return because it got removed from the console mod hub recently. Is the updates to Shash Pash, oh, sorry, Sus Pak Huo, not sure how to pronounce it again, <laughs> I do apologise in that. By Rajat G Play and Jankus. So, yeah, fixed game saving, so that's why it got removed from console at least. Along with that, fixed placeable silos and the fixed invisible objects. So it doesn't say whether or not it needs a new game save, but I'm guessing because on the previous game save or the previous update in that, it may need a new game save in that. So just a bit of a word of warning, maybe. But anyways, let's get on with our new mods for today. So with the map updates done, we're going to be looking at one new mod equipment that I thought was worth looking at, and this is the Pack of Bailers and Windrower, this is by Hispanic Modding. It is now 110.08 megabytes to download. And Changelog 5.0, is the current version, it says improved a little bit of 3D model only with the Windrowers. Along with that, a new texture of dirt, wear, and normals only for the Windrowers. New tires for the Windrowers, and this is what made me worth looking at the more variety of colours and bailers. Oh, sorry, yeah, variety of colors for the wing rules and baiters, was I meant to say. So, yeah, you'll find these as always under tools and baiters. And yeah, if we just go across, so yeah, if you're familiar with this already, you got the class quadrant 5 5300 FC wind rower, the new Holland big baiter 1290 HD, the case a LB 436 HD, and the crown big pack 1290 HDP. And yeah, I didn't go over it too much because one, this is an existing mod, and two, there is another similar mod. There is another similar mod we'll be looking at, and that is also by Spider Modding, so I'm not going to go over these too much. But yeah, we're going to be looking at the colours. And even I've used this before Nat, I've used this on a couple of Let's Plays Nat. I can't remember what the old colours were. I think they are these ones here. So you've got like, the Jungle New Fever in that. So if I just go like so. So yeah, you've got the Jungle Fever there. Along with that, you got the Slate Blue. So that's a bit of a gloss. And that is New Age. And then Aged. And then, yeah, I think it's just a different shades of blues now we're looking at. Got the Nitro Blue. Phoenix Blue, Winter Wolf, and I think some of these were, or at least associated with A2 Studio with this TLX stuff and that. But yeah, I think these are the new ones. Because yeah, things like the Tiffany Blue now and the oranges that I recall seeing before. Also, I think is it Biscuit Green a new one? Again, I do apologise for not being too sure on that. But anyway, so yeah, that's just an update. So improvement on the models, wearing that, dirt and that. Also, the new colours. And yeah, I went with... Uh, what was... I can't remember the name of it, so quickly go on to that one. Yeah, because it was... I think it was this one here. Yeah, the Jungle Fever and that, like the gloss on that. That does look nice. Uh, attached to the class... Uh, what's it? The class beater and that. That looks very good. Again, something different in terms of colour configurations and that. Not very often you see, I went, yeah, that with, on the wind rower as well. Then I thought, yeah, nice black, a bit of an aged on the wind rower and the wheels and that. And yeah, overall, that does look very nice. But anyways, that is the update to the pack of bears with wind rower by his spider modding. Now we we'll go on to our new mods for today. Starting off with our new mods, we'll be looking at the single family house by Betanoe Lucas. And I'm pretty sure I've seen this mod before, but I'm going to go over a review in case I've missed it before. But anyways, it is 12 megabytes to download, cost 63 grand, 
daily upkeep of 25. And in terms with slot counts on that, it is 70 slots, goes down to 1. And yeah, first of all, we can find this under build mode, under buildings, farmhouses. And there we go. There is no color configuration options or anything like that. But yeah, so if we go to the farmhouse, wardrobe is just going to be here. And your suit trigger is just going to be here. And then yeah, I think this is like a bit of a sort of East European Polish vibe, I think, based on the brick and the uh, plaster in that. But saying that, it is a nice looking building. At the end of the day, it is a simple seat trigger in that, but has a style to it. Without further ado, that is the single family house by Benoit Lucas. Next. Now for the manure tank, this is by Holden HB Modding. 1.7 megabytes of damage load. In terms of slot count, this is 20 slots goes down to 1. And what this is, is simply a placeable manure tank where you can purchase manure. For PC players, it is manure system ready. And it costs 2500 and the daily upkeep of 15 And I thought when I place down, they sort of like have a bit of a aesthetic feature to it. So, for example, you got your cows here and that, cow pens. This is one of the base game ones and that. There's no, no manure pit or anything like that. Or anything of sort. But obviously this is liquid manure, so... Is it liquid manure? Actually, I'll give that a little test. I got, I think it's just solid manure in that. Yeah, not sure about liquid manure, but we'll have a little look on that. So, pull over here. And, yeah, it is just liquid manure. Yeah, if it says manure in that, I guess, yeah, liquid manure is sorry in that. So, let's go and grab that a sec. So, there we go. We got a liquid manure tank. Not a solid one. Yeah, I don't know why I thought of that. But yeah, so it's got a... You know, the... What's it? The cow pen's got a manure spout, but... Again, can I have a bit of realism and a bit of role-playing? So let's look at how much this costs to fill up. So for 15,500 litres, that just cost us a shy over £4,000. To be fair, that is not too bad, actually. That is very reasonable, especially with the amount of serving all that you go through now in terms with when you sort of apply fertilizer and that to your crops and that. So yeah, I'm just going to move that over here a sec, out of the way. But anyway, so without further ado, we find this under tools and containers. Or oh, sorry, under buildings and containers, not tools and that. So yeah, 2,500 to purchase. And when you place it down with... Yeah, just as it is, not with toggle free mode. It does leave that dirt texture that. But as I said, yeah, even though the cow pens has a manure spout, you can just simply ignore that. And so yeah, just whack this down next to it. And the way it has that role play in terms with you've got two outputs now, like a storage tank here, got one output over here, and a another little output over here. But at the end of the day, it's what it is. Depends on how you want to place it and how you want to use this mod in that. But yeah, anyway, so it is a fantastic little mod. And I'm fair to say with all the mods we're looking at today, they're all fantastic mods. But without further ado, this was the Manure Tank by Holden HB Modding. Next. Moving on to our sheds. So first of all, we're going to look at the Metal Hanger Pack. This is by Coco59 Modding. 2.14 megabytes download, four slots on console each. And yeah, so it is two sheds. One is the control shed, one is the hangar. So you see here, this is a hangar. It does have lights, but the light switch that is over here, you would think. But yeah, there's no trigger for it or anything like that. And for the hay shed and that, or straw shed, bit of a similar one, but just open. However, one thing that, again, it's just a little pet peeve for me in that, is the height differences. Like, it's, what's that, a couple of inches? Yeah, at least, yeah, a few inches, I would say. A bit too short in that. At least size of one and a half gutterings. So, yeah, literally not much of a gap. I would love if that was all perfectly leveled in that, so you can, like, go 
bang 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 let like these sit together in that but at the end of the day that's just a little pet peeve in that but anyway so yeah before I rant away let's go ahead into your building sheds and it's 24 and a half grand for the hangar so that's got the Aussie metal panels and that panels oh no it's been a long day got back from work late today so Mine's a little bit frazzled, especially working in 25 degree heat in that today. And for your metal straw shed, it is 40 and a half grand, so similar. Got a nice panoramic <laughs> roofs in that. But yeah, it's just a shy shore in that. Good quality mod, again. Can't complain about too much, besides from the one and a half gutterings, differences in height, but. That's still a pet peeve, and I'm not sure if it's landscaping that's done that effect. It could be, I think, is that elevated? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, any day to be honest, I don't know. Try to look how this is placed, I didn't know the pillars and that. Actually, I think these could be exactly the same height. Yeah, I think it could be, it's just with landscaping. Again, I thought, you know, try to get it close together, but landscaping can be a bit finicky at the best of times, that, so... Yeah, I think because I got a little lump there and that. But at any day, that's a map thing. Or at least with my mod map now, which I am going to be replacing at some point. Either redo the map and that itself on new save file, or get a new test map and that. But at any day, enough waffling on. This was the Metal Hanger Pack by Coco59 Modding. Next. On to our final place walls for the day. We got the Old Log Shift Pack. This is by Agrogati. 17.47 megabytes to download, and this is four sheds in that, or technically three sheds and one silo in that. So, so terms with slot count, so the hay shed silo, which is just over there, except by the icons, that is four slots on console. And the old shed and the old small garage is also four slots. And the medium old garage, sorry, the medium old log garage is five slots, so... The large one is 5 slots, the rest is 4 slots. And yeah, so you can open the door. Nope, both going through that way. Do love the sound of the old doors opening. Again, this is just with like the rustic mods and that. And yeah, I don't know what it is, but... Could be just a me thing, I don't know, but... Before I go look in the rest... You'll find these first of all under buildings and sheds for the actual sheds, so these three here, so as I mentioned, the old small shelter, that is four slots, 5,000 to buy. For the small old log garage, that is, or garage if you're an American, 8,000, and that is also four slots. And lastly, you got the medium old log garage, or garage, that is five slots, all goes down to one for 12 grand. And in terms of your silos, the old log shed, or sorry, the hay shed that, that is only 2000 to purchase, but it only holds 80,000 litres of hay or straw. It does not accept bells and that, because yeah, it needs to be shredded and to do storage and that, so just to demonstrate, input is here, and yeah, so, yep. Yeah, is it taking the bell? No, it ain't. Nope. Nada. Which I thought was going to be the case, but... You know, sometimes with these kind of storage mods and that, sometimes these will accept bells and that. Other times they won't, or a lot of times they won't, but... It is what it is. But yeah, just to demonstrate in terms with how you put it in. Even though the trailer I'm using is a large trailer in that. The principle remains the same, so hook hook it up and yeah, so yeah, I've got straw here, so just show is hay now. So see, it's hay and straw. Nothing else can go in. Ah bloody yeah, the helicopter now. So as you can see we got a un overloading trigger now for the straw net. Just whack that in. And we want to unload it, so yeah, hay, straw, all does the job in that. And actually, one thing I want to quickly test is we go into our containers and get the multi-fruit buy station. 
Does it accept things like grass and that? You know, crops and that, I get in that. So, yeah, we'll go across the grass. Does it take grass? No, it does not. Yeah, which I thought that was the case. I did go and test everything. The only thing I didn't test was grass, because I saw, yeah, it's only hay and straw and that, but. Again, so hard in double checking that because you know sometimes descriptions can either be a bit vague in terms of details of what they accept or not accept. But no, yeah, hey, and sure, only not too bad. Only two grand out of two and a half grand. And that's going to be annoying me to not to be correct on it, so. Yeah, it is 2,000, so yeah, 8,000 years for two grand. Yeah, there's better size than that technically in terms of the cost to. Storage, storage capacity, but it looks so well now. You know, if you're doing a rustic kind of vibe in that, you know, not an old, sorry, and a old, uh, what was it, like a log barn in that, this ship pack is going to be the one for you. But, anyways, that was the old log ship pack by Agrogati. Now, on to our equipment. Moving on to our equipment, so. First of all, we're looking at the Lizard Forestry Tree Shears. This is by HR Forest and Forest It is two slots on console for both of them. Because, yeah, you've got two different kind of shears in that. So, you've got the small one here, which is the BS50. And you've got the BS90 in that. So, 50 centimeter di diameter logs and 90 centimeter diameter logs. And it does say which. For these kind of mods, it does make the obviously logic in it, but this does require the Platinum Expansions DLC, and it says in explanation marks, absolutely required, which at the end of the day, it is obvious now that you know with these fast couplings and that. But anyway, so you'll find this under tools, forestry equipment, I have to go across. So yeah, 11,250 for the BS50, 550 kilograms, and for the larger BS90 is 750 kilograms, and just costs only 30,250. When you compare that to the equivalent for the Platinum expansion, so that's going to be one of these, right? So the, yeah, the tree harvester in that. And yeah, so that can do, it says two trees, and I'm not sure what that means, but 55 centimeter diameter logs, but it costs 43 grand, so you're looking at a three and a half times, we can get three, three and a half of these for the cost of that. And these do require the Volvo, so either one will do that. I do have the yeah, Volvo EC3, the larger one, on configurations because. You can configure this quite significantly, so main colour, you got all the colour, so that's going to change the actual main coupling and the actual main frame, sorry, and the actual main frame. And reason I correct myself there, because I know some, some commented on the last mod reviews, I says, and, not and. That's just because of a combination of just local dialects, I think it is, and just how I personally speak. If it annoys you, I do apologise, but that's just me. But without further ado, so yeah, all the colours you can see. Terms with the cool claw cool colour. Again, all the colours. So that changes the claw. Cool. And the hose protectors. You know what I'm gonna do, a nice hot pink. That does the hoses and that. But yeah, so let's get our Volvo. And we'll take this over to our little forestry section. Now we're here, let's go and have a look how it works. So L1 and square that's going to open and close the shears when they turn on and turn off the shears so let's go to an, a random tree in question ah even the large ones though can't do these massive fully overgrown trees so so i just whacked down a birch tree because yeah i thought i saw a a thing that came up to say to cut yeah, even though with this one it didn't come up with the automatic, you know, realign or alignment. I did see... <laughs> yeah, this is just saw it saying cut. There we go. 
and only just on that. Uh, the main section there, okay, not the most perfect job in that. So it cuts, so yeah, once you cut your tree, just press L1 and circle to release. So yeah, not the most perfect example. Let's go with the, one of the trees that's already on the map. Even though it's going to be a bit of a smaller one to look at, just for a bit more, well, what's the word I'm looking for? Better, better showcase. Or words, not words. But yes, I'm going to grab this one here, it's the biggest of the bunch. And it says, yeah, again, I get that thing coming up saying, or the red thing that says, you know, like, can't cut. But you can cut, so, anyways, that is a better way of looking at it, so, at least a tree. But yeah, now I know that, because yeah, I was, I was looking at the. I wasn't looking at the top left and that, so looking at the red line and that says, you know, well, I was meant to say you can't cut this tree that, so. Yeah, I'm curious now, so. With the fully grown trees, this is the biggest trees you can get in FS32. The spruces with 35.8 cm diameter. Actually, correction, you can get the American elms and that. But in terms of what trees you would normally plant, because I don't think many people uses it, American elm trees and all that. And yeah, we can cut, so... Cut that. That's it. Oh no, don't, don't, don't fall. Ah, it fell. <laughs> Seeing that, it does weigh 2.3 tons, so... At the end of the day, it could be user error in that. Oh, trees back up. But yeah, so again, when it comes to forestry mods, I am not the best person to look at with mod reviews. To be honest, even Miss CP does a better job than me on that. And I know he doesn't really do too much logging in that. But yeah, anyway, so not too bad of a bit of kits. I know I'm not the best person to showcase these kind of mods. But even for a complete idiot like me and that, again, if I can do this, so can you folks. There ain't much of a competition there, but anyways. That is, it is a forestry tree shears by HR Force and Forzoikbull. Next. Now for the Chrome TX560D. This is by Agromodin. 20.13 megabytes to download. It is a trailer. Terms with slot counts and all that other lovely good stuff. It is 17 slots on console. Terms with capacity is 5, sorry, not 5, not 500. 56,000 liters. And it's a chaff transport wagon. And it does have the ability to transport also, like silage and that. But also wood chips and sugar cane, this can do. But anyway, so you'll find this under tools and traders. Moving across towards the end. There we go. 72,000 to buy. Weighs 7.2 tons. 70 slots goes down to 1. And as you can see, it's a chaff wagon, so it could do wood chips, sugar cane. And then a mixture of forage, you know, chaff and all that. And that other lovely good stuff. And in terms of its competition, that 72,000 for 56,000 years. Yeah, we're looking at like kind of these. Even the cheaper ones, 72,000. Yeah, you get a larger capacity compared to the base game items. The closest chrome one we get is the GX520. But it's a different model now. That's a 520. We're looking at a 560 in that. But yeah, that's the closest Chrome that we got base game. It is also a Trident version of this. So, in terms of options and that, you got your Michelin brands, Standard and White. BKT, Standard, Standard 2. Earth Maxis, Standard. Reddish Line, Standard, White, Standard 2, 3. That. And back to Michelin. Design reflectors, yes or no. White reflectors, red reflectors, orange reflectors, yellow reflectors, yellow reflector one, no reflector, and back to, yeah, no and white reflectors. So, yeah, it should come up on the size. As you can see, it's going with red. And it also goes around the back of the train that. So, if you're on the road and that, you're working late, late night shift in the field and that, you're going on to a main public highway. At least you know you can be seen that by traffic and that. 
Also does come with a cover, yes and no. So you've got green cover, black cover with the chrome decal. I do love those. Like they, yeah, this one here, that looks nice. Again, that's just a personal preference. But yeah, also the front axle is this ball on that, so we have a look on that. Actually, before we do, because I didn't show off the room cutter, so I do apologize. So, yeah, ring cutters is just your base game color palette. Apart from that, nothing else is able to change with color. But yeah, overall, love the detail on it. Like, you know, the hoses, connectors, and that. The, the poly counts, wherever it is. It was, yeah, it is all nicely done, that. License plate is FS. But yeah, I'm going to hop into our John Deere here. So, this is one of the base game ones. I think it's like 410, 450 horsepower. But yeah, let's see how it pulls, you know, because that as well. we got a cow pen as well, just over there. So, we can have a look. So, first of all, get, I should have keep the help menu up. So, L1 and left on the D pad is going to open the cover. And then you can close it. L1, R1. Left stick, left to right, does the wheel, so that liftable axle on that, so that I do like. And you may think, does that hit the ground? No, it doesn't. That's because you have to press R1 and then right stick up and down, you know, to lower it and raise it, so things like, you know, road usage and that, I think you would, like, lower in that and have all wheels using, I think. I should know, would it be the opposite way around, I think, because, yeah, you have this race up for highway usage and that, because, you know, road bumps and all that other lovely good stuff and that. And if you get a bit stuck in the fields, then this is the one you can use. So I've got TMR here, because I have not looked at how you empty this yet, so let's look at it together. So I'm going to go in cab, just so I can drive in, and yeah, it does not fit. So I think, you know, on that front, let's just go and see how it unloads, so... Because, yeah, first of all, I was thinking it was going to be like a rolling bed. And it is, so it does raise up the flap. And that's oh, I absolutely love. I love just how things just roll out the back. Cow bar not being too small, but... Yeah, this is for, like, large-scale farming, realistically, so... Yeah, overall, nice quality mod on that. I do like, you know, love the features on it. But anyway, so that is the Chrome TX560D by Agromodding. Next. Moving on to our vehicles, we got the AT5104 pack. This is by HR Force and Force Logical. It is 28.56 megabytes download. It is a story tank. And you may think this is very similar to the Oxbow one, we've got it as part of the Oxbow pack of that, and that you'll be correct because this is two different models. We've got the Ploger and the Oxbow version of the AT5104 pack. So, yeah, anyway, so you'll find it under vehicles and Surrey tanks. So, go to our Surrey tanks if I can find it. There we go. So, yeah, we've got the base game version here. So, we've got the Oxbow one here. I don't have the Oxbow packs installed in that, on this save file now, but yeah, exactly the same, same price, same slot count that is, 16 slots goes down to 1, same working speed, same weight and all that, so exactly the same. So you're asking Envoy, what's the difference between these two, or the Oxbow one and that, whatever? And the difference is, if we look at the base game, tie brand difference, and that is it. For these ones, the actual pack one, you get a lot more configuration, so not just wheel brands, but also actually the tires you're using, you know, different kind of tires. That's so you got the HC 3000Rs with Mitas, so Trailborg, yeah, TN 900, 1000 and 900. Michelin's got the Terry X Bib 2, Axio Bib, Axio Bib 2, Mega X Bib. And then BKT, got your ag and yeah, got verse lines. Yep, yeah, I'm back to my other so verse lines, flotations, all that. 
And to be fair, I do like the flotation tires on vehicles and that, so I don't know why. But anyway, speaking of light, so you got design 1, standard, design 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So yeah, it's all just changing different bits here and there. Go look at LED ones if you want. And window tint got no or yes, so that's a full tint, no middle ground. Front flashers, no or yes. So where is that tool? Nope, I cannot find anything I spent a minute at and yeah, I cannot find anything like the difference now. Maybe when we come to Flash of the Beacons, we'll have a look there. But anyways, moving on. Colours and that. You got all the colours and that. So main colour and that changes that. So let's go with a fluorescent green. And then for the design colours, go with the white. So that just changes the, like the, yeah, the stripe of it, some of the hood and that. And the seat got all the colours again, so that changes the seat colour of the and that. And then, yeah, we've got room colour, so we'll go with a nice... don't know why I keep on going to green and that, but yellow. Licence plate, and that is it, so... Let's go and turn this on. So, first of all, we've got the horn. Not too bad. But yeah, we'll move out. So yeah, it is a Surrey tank, so transport Surrey that to like your Surrey spreaders or just a general Surrey um, container and that. But yeah, first impressions does look good. Lights. Ah, right, so I think that's the fascist there we're looking at, so... Yeah, I guarantee if I go into this one, because I'm... I tend to make sure I don't have to... Yeah, so... That's the beacons on, but you didn't have the flashers. Anywho. So yeah, turn the beacons off. So L1 and X is to unfold the Surrey tank. So the pipe goes out. And you can turn on the Surrey tank to activate the pump to, you know, transfer to said Surrey. But yeah, actually I don't think you need to turn it on. It's just a bit more of a realism now, but anywho. L1, right stick, left to right, moves the arm, left to right and that. Then L1, up and down, does that. L1, R1, nothing there. R1, right stick, up and down, just adjusts the main arm at the end there, but not the whole arm. So yeah, you just tip your nozzle on that, however you wish. Steering that, you got yes for all steering, crab left, crab right, front wheel steering, and back to all wheel steering. So go into the cab, that is front wheel steering, now for all wheel steering, yep definitely pivots a lot better, but so I'll stop a sec, turn it off now because I want to see this starting up, so lights, anything in the cab that comes on, I don't think so. But yeah, I like how it's all the, everything comes on now, all the displays and that. But since we got this, you know what we're going to do now is take it onto our hill climb here. So this is our 45 degree incline. Because yeah, we've got a full load of Surrey. And yeah, I just want to see how it handles up the hill Nat. Because you know, this is a real test Nat. Depends on what map you're playing on in that. But yeah, this is a 45 degree climb. This can be a lot worse. It could, yeah, it could be a lot worse, but... Yeah, you know, it's doing alright. Oh no, look at that, we stopped. Oh dear. Hill starting at. Not as wet as breaking that, so... Can handle the hills. And it's just going to affect it, but to be honest, I don't expect to get far because this is a big lump of metal. And yeah. As with a lot of things, doesn't make far enough. that, barely makes to starting off the 25 meter section area I've got set up there. But yeah, moving on to the one that's actually on our concrete plate here. 
overall nice bit of kit. It's a upgrade from the base game version. Yeah, even though it's just different configurations and colour options. Things like that I don't mind. It doesn't have to be all, you know, Shambam, you know, extreme capacities and that, top speed of 200 miles an hour. It could be just simple as a case of adding extra configurations and, you know, a bit more, make it your own than that. But that's just me, my opinion at any day. Post mod review envoy here, and yeah, I just finished recording, and I realised I made a mistake with the Oxbow, so at the end of the Oxbow section, I'm going to add this on, but I made a huge oversight because, yeah, I, yeah, forget this humful this sec, for if we go to our other one quickly, one thing I completely overlooked in that was the three point linkage on the back, so I do apologise for that, and... What this really is designed for is like a distributor and that, so rather than have to, you know, empty from this to a, another Surrey tanker and that, you can use it to distribute Surrey onto the field. So I'm going with something a bit over the top and that. So if we go to our tools and Surrey tanks, so things like that require a three point linkage, so no, not that. So something like that would be a bit more suitable in that you know, to distribute your Surrey onto the field. And that is, yeah, 80 meters, 12 miles an hour. But what I went with was, apologies for the interruption there. So yep, yeah, what I went with, with something a bit stupid was uh, one of the larger distributors and that. So was a bit iffy getting on. And to be fair, it does look a bit off to me, it does not that. But I thought, heck yeah, that, give it a go. What could possibly go wrong, so... It unfolds in that. <laughs> Just, that looks so weird, that does. <laughs> oh, God. So, let's go add the writ. And, yeah, I did not see that message coming up. Because, yeah, I was looking at something else for a moment, so... Unfold it. Oh yeah, first need to lower it, so fair enough. Yeah, hunky dory. But yeah, this works, so you can have a 22,000 year Surrey tank. Self propelled in that, and that can distribute a massive amount of Surrey onto the field. And even with a larger working width than planned. So, again, I apologise for. Should, I should have done it at the time when I was like testing it and looking around. I want to say testing, like for this one particularly, I was like having a look around on it and that. And yeah, just completely forget to look at the massive report leakage on the back, so I do apologise. But, anyways, let's move on to our next mod. Moving on to our penultimate mod of the day, we've got the Class Jaguar 50 Years Edition. This is by Renter Modding, 37.84 megabytes of download. And yeah, basically, what it is, it's a sort of Customized version of the Class Jaguar 960 Terra and the Class Jaguar 980-930. Not sure if we've got that base game map, but we'll have a little look in that. So, four chargers and that. So yeah, we've got the 960 Terra track, but yeah, not the 980-930. I know there's got different mods in that for that one there. So that is the smaller version of the two. Terms for slot counts and that, so the 960 Terra is 21 slots, or sorry, 22 slots, and the 980, 930 at the end there, that is 21 slots, goes down to one each and that, so terms with anything else that, there's no like attachers or anything that, no forged hairs within that as part of the pack and that, which I do not mind because there is plenty of mods on the mod hub, or just use the base game stuff and that, all works attention now, especially. With the top engines and that, yeah, 750 horsepower, not a problem for either of these. But anyway, so, moving on to the Jaguar 960. Configurations that is very similar, the only difference is the engines, but I'm going to quick go over those for both I will. So, first of all, for the 960 Terra Track, we've got the normal one here, 626 horsepower. And then you go up to 990, and that's 925 horsepower. So, difference is 86 grand in engine. That so, one thing to note, uh, to be fair, on that for Will Brand, it's got 
Trailboard, Michelin, Continentals, Mitas, Fresh Lines, and back to Trailboard. The different generations of the Class Jaguar with the Class 4 harvesters and that, from the original ones 50 years ago to the modern day ones. But yeah, apart from that, nothing else. Nothing on side, nothing in the cab. No, nope, just double checking that. But yeah, so pipe, very familiar with this already. Standard, long pipe, and back to standard. Main colour, so you've got your base game colour palette. Along with different greys and that, a class grey special and that. Got your class greens and that, including class chrome. That's the same for the white and the reds. Yeah, class grey and all that. And then yeah, quickly moving on to the 980, 930. So the 930 now, so again, 50 year decal, that's how it looks on that. I should just zoom it in a bit so you actually renders in that bit better. But yeah, the difference is just the engine, as I've already mentioned, so 930 starts out for 159 grand. And for additional 23 grand, you can go up to 516 horsepower for the 940, 950, 960, 970, 980. For an additional 109 grand, sorry, 129 grand, so almost half a mil. Compare that to that, 467 grand for 925 horsepower. But to be fair, yeah, even then. Yeah, to be honest, if it was me, I'll go with the 960 Terra Track. One is maximum engine that in terms with at least 750 horsepower, basically, moist. Yeah, just go with the other one, but again, if you prefer wheels and that, it's down to you. Just getting a bit of advice on that, so... Again, wheels is all exactly the same, just see a bit differently, you know, the wides at the front. And yeah, that's pretty much it, just the wides. And yeah, colours and that is all exactly the same. So yeah, let's hop into the 990 Terra Track. I should just quick show off the class red chrome. That looks nice. I, I chromed it well, I did, and thus look quite nice indeed. So, fair play. So, lights, left indicator, right indicator, beacons. So, yeah, let's go ahead and that. So, one thing I want to do is quickly, you know, just look it up and that, sort of see how it performs that in the field and that. So we'll hook you up. And then we'll back it up, back it up to our trailer. And yeah, it's not the largest trailer there, but it's a big herd than most space game trailers, I think, still, so... Yeah, I'm not too worried in that. But yeah, not to worry about folding or unfolding anything in that. Actually, one thing we'll do a sec is just quickly un. It's got your unfolding that, to empty the pipe, pipe in. And yeah, that is it. Just double check in and not miss anything. Because yeah, I do not want to do that. But yeah, in cab. Drop the header, and we are chaffing our corn. Also, I forgot to mention the capacity for the size additive is 20 litres for each. Apologies there, a very quick sneeze I just had there. But yeah, does the job in that, you know, performs well. At the end of the day, it's very similar to the base game model or and other models we've seen. But yeah, it's just the additional of the decal nat and as well as the chrome nat. Yeah, I don't think I've seen too many chromed, you know, cloth harvesters in that before in that in my life, to be fair. But anyways, that is the Class Jaguar Pack 50 Years Edition by Renter Modding. Now for our final mod of the day. For our final mod of the day, we've got the Matador Gigant, or Gigant, I think it's Gigant or Gigant, not sure. This is by Deutsche Vault, 58.72 megabytes to download. Turns with slot counts and all that first of all, so the actual harvester itself is 17 slots and goes down to 1. And for both cutters, the 3 meter and 4 meter cutter, that is 6 slots each in that. So, what it is exactly, I think it's pretty sure it's like an 
old class horse it looks like. We're very close to it. Maybe it was used to be class nap before class was class. Oh yeah, it is class nap. Well, I was like scratching my head when I first saw it. I thought that does look distinct to be like a class combine harvester and that. So this is a open cabin one. Costs only just seventeen and a half grand and that. So if you're doing the you know vintage survival and that kind of thing, vintage well, survival challenge and that esque, this will be a very good harvester and that for you. So terms we have to build setups and that. So you got standard, standard two, standard three. Sander 4, Sander 5, 6, 7, 8, and yeah, back to Sander, and in terms of weights and that, doesn't do too much, but yeah, it's just like the rim spacers and that, I think it is, or whatever you call them that. In terms of your seats, you got 1, 2, or 1, so do you want a little bit of a backrest for your butt cheeks and your cushion that, yes or no, or at that rate. Anyway, so yeah, anyways, chopper and that, yes or no. That's at the back, that has its own colour option that. And speaking of colour, so you got green, green two, green three, which is a little bit more of a floral green it does, I think. Green four, green five, barrier green. And then, yeah, just like bare like metal silver that is. So if we go with green on that, the chopper on that, that can be changed to a red. And yeah, it's just a chopper and the rim colours that has the red option. Engine and all that, engine the main colour does not have that unfortunately. Ah yeah, that's the engine, I was like looking at the engine now to find it. But yeah, so grey, green is that for the engine. And for your headers and that, so you'll find this under tools and headers. Go towards the end, and you'll see there four and a half grand, five and a half grand, respectively, three or four meters. It only does the basic grains, and obviously, in that wheat, barley, oats, soybeans, sorghum, and canola, or rapeseed, that. Oh, I like that. Let's, let's do that again, because let's quickly jump to heads. I like that, that is nice. So, to do that, so you hop in, and that's it. Now, let's try to see if you can do it from outside the camera, but no, you can't. So, as I said, I want to be in the other one. Yeah, I just can't get enough of that. So, oh, yeah, that's how I'm breaking out. Is that handbrake or gear? Ooh, that is a nice sound. Horn. Very simple horn, but I don't think these come with horns, didn't they? Oh, look at that, they shifted on sides. Second. We're in top gear. And yeah, downshift, reverse. Yeah, I'm just looking at the controls now, first of all. That is nice. Uh, yeah, it's actually quite amazing to be fair in that. But yeah, so L1, anyways. Uh, yeah, L1 right stick and that does uh, just your own header. And then also, you got your pipe out. Also, I forgot to mention, in terms with some other details in that, like how much it can carry in that, so. Already seen it, but 2,150 litres, so not much. Seven ton, it just weighs, so yeah, it's the lowest combine here by far. 90 horsepower, simple manual gear, and as I mentioned, 70 slots goes down to one. And the headers and that are both six meters each. But anyway, so let's turn that off. And let's, let's get harvesting. So we're and yeah, that does look very nice. Not much dust that coming out of the back. I think that's because we got the chopper in that. Ah, that has the chopper as well. Hmm. I thought I didn't select the chopper in that, but I must have done, so... Let's go and 
grab a header in a sec. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, I just want to see how this looks like without the chopper in that. Does it just kick out a lot of dust in that? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Just, to be fair, it's not actually dusty in that. Because, yeah, first of all, speaking, you know, like, just get outside the cab a sec and get a bit far away with the camera in that. But, yeah, first of all, I was thinking it was going to be, you know, just a case of... Actually, I'm not sure what I was thinking of this year. I think, yeah, it'd be very dusty now, you know, with an actual... How an old combine like this and this kind of era would perform. You know, dust kicking up in your face and that. Open to the elements and that. You never know if you hit a rock, a rock's going to come through that and hit you smack in the face. Yeah, that wouldn't end too well, I don't think, personally, that. But, anywho, let's move on from there. Cracking a bit of kit, this is, and I do mean I do love to have more of these old equipment than that. Like for FS25 and that, we do need more older equipment than that. Yeah, I mean, I'll get me the most popular download in that, but I still think it will be very popular nevertheless in that, especially when you see on PC and that. So many old combines not on PC, that just doesn't come to console and that. Yeah, I know a lot of it's down to license and that, and poly count sizes and that, I'm sure. But yeah, we'd love to have more of these and that. Especially just look at our character there. You know, just chilling, glitchy hands and that, steering. They go, whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> far as I'm aware, in first person that, everything looks peachy. But yeah, <laughs> the glitchy hands. Uh, that does get me, that does. But yeah, overall, crack a bit of kit. Something I highly recommend. Yep, again, it's a use case scenario for this. Yep. God forbid, if you're someone, you know, you... Like what I did with this map and that, you know, create a massive mega field for pretty much the entire map. Use this, even like a normal 2x map and that, like, all of this harvesting, all of this. Even just a, a quarter of it, or even just a square alone, a square on this map, that would take you forever to do that. And a lot of unloading as well, not to mention that. So, good definitely need to be using AI Nat or a friend to help you with that. But yeah, regardless, I do appreciate these kind of mods. The level of detail in that is nice, it's simple, basic. At the end of the day, sometimes that's all that matters. Just keep it simple, stupid, not stupid, simple. No, it's the other way around. Keep it stupid, simple, not simple, stupid. Well, I don't know how that uh, the same goes and that, but anyways, it is getting long now. I'll get a bit delulu here, and that's been ages to getting this mod review done now. Like as I as I mentioned already, saying that didn't get from work until what about five o'clock and that say yeah, finished up out quarter past four. So yeah, five o'clock got home and that needed a bath. I did so. Bottom out of the bath, clock almost and that, and yeah, currently it is quarter past ten. And I need to get this edit and uploaded. It will be done today as it comes out. Also, I need to get the thumbnails and that done for my Let's Plays. And that, that's coming up today. Or hopefully by the time this comes out, sometime this tonight, my other two videos should be dropping as well. So that's something to look forward to in that. And yeah, please watch those videos if you don't mind watching some Let's Plays in that. One of them is F1 Manager 24. Do something a bit different. I'm a huge F1 fan in that. So. Yeah, for mix things up a little bit. But anyways, as always, that is all the mods for 15th of August. Yeah, 15th of August 2024. But anyways, as always, hopefully you found this helpful and informative in some way, shape, or form. If so, smash the button. Feel free to comment down below. If you want to share some, please be my guest. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, then please consider. But for you to do, hope you nice nice day. But for now, see me farmer and watch stream. And I'll see you all uh, very soon.